everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com. In this video, I'm gonna go over how to study for medical, surgical nursing, and nursing school. So I'm gonna cover why students struggle in this class, common mistakes they make, how to study. I'm gonna simplify it for you and show you what to concentrate. And then I'm gonna take it a step further and actually cover a topic that you may be tested on at some time, show you how to break it down, what areas you need to focus on, how to take the study guide and your notes and compare them between the two and grab that material that you need to know for a test, and then give you a sample test question using that material and show you what your professor is going to be looking for. Okay, so why do students struggle in this class? This class is the first nursing class that students encounter that's going to require you to put it all together. You're going to have to know your pathophysiology, your pharmacology, your fundamentals of nursing, and it's all coming together. And this is also where students are getting the first taste of NCLEX style test questions. On your exams in medical surgical nursing, it's not fact-based questions. Like remember in AMP, it's like, which bone is connected to the femur? That's a fact. That doesn't require um, critical thinking. That requires memorization. And this is where students tend to struggle because they don't know how to answer these type of questions because they're so used to fact-based questions. And next, last but not least, they have issues with just memorizing material and not fully understanding it. So, common mistakes. I'm gonna go in depth with this. Okay, first. Some students, they try to read every chapter word by word, and this is not a good idea because this wastes a lot of time, and in reality, your brain is getting fried because it's just so much material to read because medical surgical books, they are like thick. They're like thousands of pages, and chapters are hundreds of pages. So instead of trying to read it word by word, develop a great strategy, which I wanna give you things that you need to pick out on certain topics, and apply that to that. Next, they don't know how to answer NCLEX questions, which is what I just said. I made a whole video that I really recommend that you check out. The link will be in the description below. And I give you five strategies on how to answer NCLEX questions because these questions are critical thinking questions. They will give you a scenario and they will give you responses and all the responses could be right, but there's one response that is the best. And <clears throat> with those strategies I talked about, I show you how to eliminate and pick the right ones. Next, they don't truly understand the material, rather they've just tried to memorize it. For instance, in medical surgical nursing, you're going to have to know about congestive heart failure. Sometimes students make the mistake of just trying to memorize how what congestive heart failure is, what those symptoms are. But you have to truly understand it. You have to understand what's going on in the body whenever a patient is experiencing congestive heart failure. And then everything else will make sense. The medications that will be that the patient will be on will make sense because they'll be on a diuretic because what's happening with congestive heart failure is that your heart muscle is weak so you have backup of fluid and you'll understand why that patient's getting those symptoms and then you'll take it a step further and it'll be like common sense of why you're gonna be providing these common nursing interventions and what's gonna be a priority with them. So you have to truly grasp this material. And last, they don't give themselves enough time to study. Now in our study series, we have went over several um, videos of how to organize your time, how to plan, how to set up your planner when preparing for an exam, and I really recommend that you check those videos out to help you develop a really good study plan. Now, how do you study for this class? Okay, first, I've always honed in on this on all my study videos. You have to learn what type of learner you are. Are you a visual learner, auditory learner, tactile learner, or read-write learner? Because that will help you focus what you need to focus on whenever you're studying because visual learners learn a little bit differently than auditory learners. Okay, with most tests in your medical surgical class, I know my professors did, actually for all my nursing classes, they gave us like a basic study guide. And the study guide was maybe like two pages and it just had um, key concepts on it of what was gonna be covered on the test. For instance, it would say congestive heart failure, pneumothoraxes, renal failure, diabetic ketoacidosis, things like that. And you would have to go and know everything about those topics because those were gonna be test questions, which is really helpful when studying. 
So hopefully your professor will give you a study guide. Most do. Next, you're going to get a study guide. I really, really recommend a study guide, especially when you start hitting these nursing classes. These are the three I recommend. Don't get all three. Pick one and go with it. The first one I recommend is Saunders Comprehensive NCLEX Review Guide. If you get this book, you won't need any other review books for your classes because it's just a huge book that contains everything that you need to know for nursing, for NCLEX, and it's so great in guiding you how to study for these lecture exams. Or if you want to get individual books, because these are really good as well, they focus. Um, I recommend Medical Surgical Made Incredibly Easy. This is a great book. It breaks down the content for you, has practice questions specifically related to medical surgical nursing. The Saunders Review Book does too. It comes with a CD, and you can click in the software if you just want to practice medical surgical questions. And then um, another one that I really recommend, I love this company is Pearson Review and Rationales for Medical Surgical Nursing. Another great book. You can't go wrong with either of those two. So what you do whenever you're fixing to study, you get your study guide, you get your book, your textbook. You'll be using that um, to read in, but you're not going to be reading it word by word, word for word. You're just going to be looking at the concepts and the key notes in it. Then you're going to look at the notes that you took in class. You're going to get your PowerPoints out that your teacher has given you your study guide book, and what you're going to do with all of those things is that you're going to take the key concept and you're going to say that you're going to over congestive heart failure. You're going to read in your book about congestive heart failure. You're going to hit the highlights. Next, you're going to look at your notes. What did the professor go over in class? You're going to look at the PowerPoints. Then you're going to go to your study guide, and you're going to read the section about congestive heart failure. And what's great about these study guides is it highlights, bolds, puts asterisks, everything by things that are really hit on, on exa in exams and on the NCLEX, and you're going to understand those. Your book is what's going to help you understand the patho behind it, and the study guide is just going to highlight the important concepts in it. Now say that you're still having a problem understanding the patho because you really, in medical surgical, any disease process you're going over, you have to understand how it's affecting the body to grasp nursing interventions, to grasp the medicines and everything like that. If you're still not getting after all that, I really recommend on YouTube. YouTube is a great resource, right? And um, you get on there and you try to find videos that people have made about these certain disease processes because it'll help you learn it and understand it, take it even a step further. That helped me and it's helped a lot of other students. So if you ever have trouble, do that. Then after you do all that, Practice NCLEX questions prior to an exam in those content areas. Because remember, what I said was that medical surgical reason students struggle is because of the NCLEX style questions. And practicing these questions over and over is going to help you get in a rhythm, help you develop your strategies, and understanding what these questions are asking you. So prior to an exam, always practice NCLEX questions in those content areas that you're going over for that particular subject. Now, let's talk about a certain thing. I'm going to give you an example so you can help understand what I'm talking about in applying these strategies. Okay, say you're fixing to have a medical surgical exam, and on the study guide, your teacher says, know about pneumothorax, because pneumothorax is going to be on there. So, what you want to do is you want to get out all your resources, you want to get out your textbooks, your notes, your study guides, and your PowerPoints, and you want to pay attention to these content areas about pneumothorax the patho behind it, what causes a pneumothorax, assessment findings, nursing interventions, and test order. Because whenever you're going to be given a case scenario or a test question, it's going to have all this information in it, or you're going to have to give this information in the test and for one of the options. So let me show you an example of a pneumothorax, of class notes that have been taken, taken of pneumothorax and compare it to a study guide. It's actually a Saunders Comprehensive NCLEX study guide. I think it's edition four. And show you how you look and you find the similarities and you make note of that because those are probably going to be test questions. Okay, first let's look at the study guide. Now in this study guide, it's the Saunders study guide, it's edition four, I have looked up pneumothorax and I'm going to show you how to compare what's in the book with your notes and how to point out the most important parts. Now in study guides, they're just so great for breaking everything down and it's easily put everything in an 
order for us. And first, it's down at the bottom. That's where we're starting. Um, it talks about the description of a pneumothorax and tells you what it is, gives you a little bit of the pathophysiology behind it and what happens. And then C, point C, it's talking about a spontaneous pneumothorax, which is a rupture of a pulmonary bleb. And then it talks about an open pneumothorax and E, which is... Um, Point E, it says a tension pneumothorax, which occurs from blunt chest injury to the chest, or um, mechanical ventilation can cause that. So that just talked about like the different types of pneumothoraxes that you can have. And a lot of tests will throw out there to you and will tell you, hey, this patient's x-ray show, chest x-ray showed a rupture of a pulmonary bleb. What do you expect to find with this patient? So you would know it was spontaneous and you would have to answer accordingly. So always make sure anytime you're looking at some disease process and it says there's this, this, and this different types, you're always looking at that. And then two, it points you up to the box up at the top, and it's showing you how a patient is going to present with a pneumothorax. And you have all types of things. Like they're gonna have absent breath sounds on an affected side, they're gonna have um, fast heart rate, difficulty breathing, and tracheal deviation to the unaffected side with the tension pneumothorax. And you really, anytime you, anytime you see boxes or anything in your study guide, look at those. Those are so important. And um, then you'll go down to three and it says intervention. And notice those little triangles on the right. This is really important because it's telling you, hey, this is important. This may be an option on a test and you need to know this for a pneumothorax. So if you had a pneumo, you would want to put a dressing over the chest wound if it was open, administer oxygen, place them in high Fowler's position, prepare for a chest tube placement, watch for subcutaneous emphysema, things like that. And you want to commit that to memory. Now let's go over and look at some notes that you could take in class about a pneumo. And for this specific class, the teacher went over pneumothorax, talked about what it was, and then highlighted in pink, the teacher talked about, you know, the different types, spontaneous, open, tension, and things like that. And they talked about the mediastinal shift, which what can happen with the tension. And pneumothoraxes are diagnosed with chest x-rays. And teacher went over how the patient may present. And then at the bottom, the nursing interventions. And what I've done is that I've highlighted in pink, whenever I referred back to my study guide, of what the common similarities of what I've seen between my notes, of what my teacher said, and what I found in the book. And this really helps because this right here is literally telling you, hey, memorize this stuff, know this stuff, commit it to memory, because this is probably going to be on an exam. So that's just super helpful when you're trying to take a certain topic that a teacher has told you is going to be on a test and you're trying to find out what you're going to need to know for the exam. Okay, now that you see the comparison, and if you notice, I pointed out spontaneous pneumothorax and tension pneumothorax. And in this sample question I'm going to give you, it has to deal with those. So let's go over this question. A patient is admitted to the ER with blunt force trauma to the chest. So you should automatically be thinking, hey, this is a pneumothorax and it's probably going to be a tension one because they've had blunt trauma to the chest. On assessment, you note the patient has no breath sounds on the left side, dyspnea, Oxygen saturation of 80%, a heart rate of 120. This should be sending off a red flag to you whenever you studied your assessment findings because remember in that study guide it was talking about that um, they're probably not going to have breath, they're going to have absent breath sounds on one side, meaning that the lungs collapse, which in turn will have difficulty breathing, their oxygen saturation is going to be down, and their heart's going to try to be compensating for it to shift more oxygen everywhere, and so it's going to be pumping faster. So you, it's like, hey, I know for sure this patient has a pneumothorax, not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure, and it's probably a tension pneumothorax because because the question that said blunt force trauma. Okay, which of the following findings may also be present with this patient? Now, anytime you're answering NCLEX questions, you need to look at each option and you need to ask yourself, hey, is this statement true? Does this statement apply to what's going on to the patient? Because it can, it'll throw out options that are true statements, but it may not be true for what's going on with your patient. So let's get started. Okay, A, a chest x-ray showing a ruptured pulmonary bleb. This is a true statement, but 
This is not for a tension pneumothorax. This is for a spontaneous pneumothorax. So this, quest, this statement is false, so we can automatically eliminate that. B, deviated trachea on the right side. We know whenever we do have a tension pneumothorax, we can have the mediastinal shift, which was pointed out in the notes, and you can have the trachea move to the unaffected side, which we have no breath sounds on the left side, so we would expect um, a deviated trachea to the right side. So that may be correct, so we're gonna keep that in our mind. Okay, C, paradoxal respiration respirations. Um, this is a, um, an assessment finding for a flail chest, and this was not one of our assessment findings for a pneumo, so we know that that's not it. And then D, hemostasis. This is coughing up blood, and this is an assessment finding for another condition does not happen with pneumothorax. So we know that that's wrong. And see how they've thrown these out here that, yeah, this could possibly be it, but you had to know from looking at your assessment findings and all that stuff and knowing the pathophysiology of what's happening with a pneumo of what you would find. So the answer is B, deviated trachea on the right side. Okay, so that is how you study for medical surgical nursing. Just remember to focus on those areas, get a study guide, and practice those NCLEX questions. Learn what those questions are asking you, and um, you'll do great. And thank you so much for watching this video, and please check out my other um, videos on how to study for other classes in nursing school, and please subscribe to this YouTube channel.